Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. It is yours truly, Crystal. Clearly I'm not together today because you can see my backdrop and you know what? I just don't care. Um, it's a paranormal podcast for those of you brave enough to join the circle. Bringing in Kat right now. Right meow. Right meow. I was just going to say that. Right meow. <laughs> you know? I, um, I did some fun stuff for TikTok today. I got to go... Um, visit some animals that are up for adoption and I did a little TikTok on it and uh, it was really fun. It was so fun. So yeah, I was excited about that. How was your Friday? Low key, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little rainy today here in New Hampshire and my lizard's sleepy and I'm sleepy. It's a mood, you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Is she yeah. about to go hiber hibernation, but it's a different term I know in the lizard world, but yeah. she's about to do that, right? Mm-hmm, she's about to go into brumation. Usually she starts to hibernate and sleep in October, mm -hmm. but it's been especially cooler here a little bit earlier this year. So um, she's starting to show some signs of sleepiness. And how long does she hibernate for? Up to six months. Jeez. Up to six months. They don't eat. They don't drink anything. Um, they just sleep, which is a mood. I also wish I could do that. I would, so. If she needs a roommate, just let her know. You know what I mean? Like, I will. I'm Absolutely. interested. You know, like I'm down for <laughs> hibernation for six months. No. So today is going to be a good stream as always. Kat and I are just all over the place. And that's just like what we do. You know what I mean? Like right. it's just how we do things. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many things to like chat about today. I think we'll, let's start with like paranormal news stuff first. I have the notes. Yeah. I have notes. And the tea, right? Yeah, um, it's interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of like weird things going on right now in paranormal if you guys haven't been paying attention. And um, where's the place to start? What do you think? Destination Fear? Fear, yeah. Should we do Season that? Season three. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do it. Season three, and you know, like I've always talked about on my channel, like the three season hump is a big deal. So once you get past the three season hump, it's a big deal. And so, you know, at the end of the day, no matter how I critique other filmmakers, I am very happy for people that can get to or past the third season. So for Destination Fear to get to the third season, that's huge. And I'm, I'm very happy for them because um, that means that, you know, everyone involved is uh is really excited about um i'm talking like people who are financing and producing it like everybody the network is proud of them so it's a big deal like when you're you have that much support um however you know we started out watching you know third season of destination fear and the first few episodes i think were really good Enjoyed them to be honest i really did the first few episodes were great mm -hmm. it was see it was season three episode five and episode six or seven i can't remember the exact number that some interesting things started to happen and i was like hmm okay all right mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's hard because like you're you have the same problem i do now which is it's really hard to sit through any sort of film without analyzing it and critiquing it. So immediately you're going to be like, ooh, that was a red flag. Ooh, that was weird. That And so most of these episodes of Destination Fury, you watched before I did. And you were like, I'm not going to tell you what happened, but like, I'm going to, you're going to find it very interesting. Um, so I did watch them sort of after Cat, and then we kind of came together with some, some ideas on it. So I'm going to let you start the chat of like the first few red flags that you were like, what's going on here? Yeah, I think it's really interesting too. Like, I really enjoy, especially watching like paranormal shows because it's a really great learning experience as well as someone that's still trying to get immersed in the film world. So mm -hmm. it's fun to, not fun, I shouldn't say fun, but it is good to sometimes um, pick apart some things um, just to get a different take on it, you know? And with episode five, it was Chelsea's pick. Uh, they went to Green County Alms House. Mm -hmm. I can't remember, I think. Was it in Pennsylvania? I can't really remember. It's East Coast. Yeah, it was somewhere yeah. like um, Northeast. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and it was 
during the beginning, so usually um, when each episode begins, um, the crew or whoever is in charge of picking the location, they go to an area that's, uh, you know, the aesthetic or the theme of the location, but they don't know the location um, and they do something like crazy. So essentially and they each got like a week where they got to pick their own location and Chelsea's was this place that nobody's ever investigated before. Yeah. Which is a little dangerous if it's not well known, just because as a filmmaker, you're going to be going in there and you're going to be concerned. What if we don't get any paranormal evidence? You know what I mean? Because like, that's that's a fear that executives have. When you're in negotiations with executives, it happens to me every negotiation. They sit me down and say, so what happens if you you set 10 locations for a series and two of them you get no evidence? And I always say, well, that's never happened to me. But, you know, the likelihood of that happening is locations that no one's ever done before. Like, I'm talking even, like, local groups. Like, nobody's touched it. And it is scary. It's dangerous. Because you are, like, you know, you have to deliver at the end of the day. And if you're coming back without any evidence, that that's complicated. True. That's a really good point. Yeah. It, it was interesting. I, I liked the history of the location as far as I can remember, but it is hard. It's, you're kind of gambling with the experiences you might have there. Um, but the part that really was interesting to me was um, instead of going to a place to go and do something crazy, um, Chelsea did something in regards to like fear. Mm -hmm. So um, she had this box, she set up this table outside of the RV and nobody could see inside the box but her or the camera that was, you know, looking at the items in this box. And she wouldn't tell Dakota, Tanner or Alex what were, was in the box, but she would tell them to stick their hand in the box and they would feel weird things. and. You know, Essentially, uh, this is my take on it. Um, it. Like, if you notice this season, I mean, they've always done like a little bit of an adventure on each location. Adventure, yes. But That's this good. one was like this season. They're try. It's not just random. So, like the first season, they were um, like, what, didn't they go to like Niagara Falls just because they were in the area? Like, and I don't mind random adventures. Honestly, I don't think the adventures need to be pertained to every location. But this season, for some reason, they're tying it all in, which honestly sometimes doesn't make sense. Like, one episode, they jumped in the freezing ocean, and I was like, because, like, men died in the water, like, and they were, like, literally in their swimsuits in the middle of winter um, in the Atlantic Ocean, and I thought that was kind of dumb and weird. Like, you could literally get hypothermia. It's really not cute at that point. That's dangerous. And then yeah. this episode, basically how they tied it in was, this location's never been investigated, it's never been done, it's never been touched. So I'm doing something secretive you guys don't know with this secret box that's never been done and never been touched. So that's that's how it was tied in, which I thought was a little corny, I'm going to be honest. But yeah. Kat had a, a bit of a shit fit when she realized what happened with this episode. It was really... I wasn't expecting it, um, but she had put... Um, spoil, spoiler alert, by the way, if you haven't seen the episode yet... Um, she put a bearded dragon <laughs> in one of the boxes and I was like, oh, Lily, you know, like, oh, cute. But when there was so much yelling and like the hand was being Screaming. put in the box, you could see some signs in the dragon that it was, it was a little stressed, I guess, um, was my main concern. And then the other, you know, the, the other instances were worms, like mealworms, which is what a bearded dragon eats. And then the last one was crickets. Um, so someone put their hand um, in the box and there would be crickets everywhere, which is also a bearded dragon meat. So and there were snakes. Me, yeah, and there were snakes too. There was, I think it was like two or three or something like that. Mm -hmm. They were pretty they were big size. Mm -hmm. um, to me, from what I could gather from something like that, I could only assume if this was a location that hadn't been, uh, you know, investigated at before, that a lot of time was put into booking the location and finding out the information, and not as much time was put into what would happen before they go to the location. Like the Just adventure, kind of... the like adventure. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you, it seemed like a why visit. were you triggered because Kat is a owner of a very famous bearded dragon? No. <laughs> She's becoming famous on Instagram, literally. Yeah, all 50 followers. She's so famous. Yeah, she's very famous. No, but really, you've had a bearded dragon, and you you adopted this dragon um, from a friend, and you didn't know anything about dragons, and 
neither do I. I'm not. I don't. I don't know about lizards, but like, like she's oh. like a person in her own. Lily is like, and I like you know I, I get pictures and videos every day of of Lily, um, and that's your dragon. And you know I agree. I think that you know there's something called black beard that lizards get when they get stressed or scared or they're feeling agitated or territorial or like they're going to be hurt. Um, the, the females don't bite as much as the males can be quite aggressive. But I think Kat's biggest concern was, you know, you put a, a lizard in a dark box and then people are grabbing at it and they're screaming at it and it could stress the lizard and essentially like kill it from a heart attack or stress. And I think that's what upset you the most, right? Mainly the, the biggest thing that I was upset with. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, they're really chill, but in such a weird chaotic moment as that was and I'm sure it was a lot longer than the clips that they showed in the episode I was a little I was a stressed dragon mom <laughs> I was a very stressed dragon mom so um yeah that was um I wasn't a huge fan of that right just a, well I think it goes back to like just respecting all creatures like just because like someone out there watching may not be a lizard person doesn't mean they're still like a living creature and they still deserve sort of respect um, I'm assuming that the snakes they used for this episode weren't like, you know, venomous or like biting sort of snakes. So I don't think those would be as affected, but you're right. Bearded dragons are highly sensitive. I mean, I, like I said, I see Lily every day and she uh, reacts to noises and everything. So yeah, I can't imagine. Uh, you're right. Where did this idea come of for their adventure? You randomly get this idea of like, oh, let's scare him. Let's go to the, you know, store and buy a bearded dragon you also don't agree with bearded dragons being sold in stores because you think they're such high maintenance and you you believe that um this particular kind of reptile should have never been a pet uh people kill them and they die easily because they're uh temperamental i mean your the temperature has to be right the food has to be right uh i mean every like it's a very particular sort of creature to have as a pet so yeah. you were like, why did you randomly just go get a bearded dragon and throw it in a box? It's an exotic pet. I mean, and, and they're already in unfamiliar territory because they're only native to Australia. Um, and I know I have one, um, but it was adopted. I didn't, didn't buy it from a store. And I'm not saying if you bought one from a store, it's wrong. Um, that's just, it's just my opinion on that, um, you know, and how I felt in that moment. Well, you've also helped rescue bearded dragons before in the past. Mm -hmm. and rehabilitate dragons so this is serious like this is a side you guys may not know about cat like she's very she has owned chinchillas before she's owned hamsters <laughs> guinea pigs like she likes yep. those little creatures which is fine she's very much green witch vibe you know what i mean and then she has her little dragon and you're right like i've seen i've seen all of the the little <laughs> agendas that Kat has been on with saving she's literally rehabilitated dragons to where they were dying like literally and she's kept them in her house and so she understands how literally fragile these things are um anything like even the temperature being out in the cold in a box without the right you were upset about that too like it shouldn't have just been thrown in a box without a heat sensor. Who knows how long it was in the box for. You're in the middle of New England in the winter. It can die, literally, because it's a um, desert creature, literally. It's, yeah, I mean, it's it's something called a UV light. It's, it's a heating light as well. But bearded dragons need UV to help strengthen their bones as well as other... Digestion, like, like literally. Mm-hmm, and when they don't get that UV and they're just kind of put in there with the heat lamp... Um, they get really bad bone deformities where like their arms are growing in the other direction and some of them end up having to like lose their legs. And so it's just when I see things like that, when it comes to bearded dragons, it's, I get a little sensitive. Well, and it. this is winter time and it's probably Burmation time, which is their hibernation. So Kat's mm -hmm. kind of like, why are you, bo when a bearded dragon goes into their hibernation, you, they go into hibernation for six months max, sometimes even a little more. And they don't move for six months, they sleep, they pack on a bunch of pounds, they don't go to the bathroom, they don't eat, and you're not supposed to move them when they're in hibernation. Hibernation in the United States for a bearded dragon would be our winter time, and that's because um, they are, you know, normally a desert creature. So Kat was kind of like, why are you throwing this bearded dragon around in a box when it should be in hibernation in the middle of winter, plus you have it out in the cold? Like there were a lot of like, what the hell are you guys doing? That was a huge, that was a little bit of a trigger for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah. 
So that was my take on that episode. And then we had the other episode of season or episode six or seven with Alex's location. Mm -hmm. And that was wild. That was wild. That was at old fellow's home. Um, And someone was at the location at night. And that was the part that I was really interested in Crystal watching because... uh, My light is flashing and your, like, audio is cutting out. I don't know, like, what demon's in my house tonight, but I really don't have time for this. You know what I'm saying? Is it me? Is it on I don't think so because it's happening when my light flashes, so something's messing with my electronics like normal. Welcome to the Ghost Girl Diaries podcast where (laughs) ghosts make their way right into my house to make themselves known. Sorry. Okay. We had a weird instance before we came on, too. Like someone, like someone's webcam went off completely. Yeah, it was like disconnected. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Um, someone <laughs> said, uh, "What are the Dutch bearded dragons?" I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? No, I'm not. I'm not familiar with those. Yeah, what, what color? Is. Yeah, what it color? The color. Yeah. Yeah. I have a um, what's called a leatherback morph bearded dragon. So they're pretty rare bearded dragon, um, but they're mainly like bright yellow. Um, mixed between bright yellow and orange so some they might have different names for different colors mm-hmm. the starburst is a very yellow bearded dragon like in itself when it's just that you know cats making me want like an iguana now i want iguana and <laughs> i want a bond moment with and, the chameleon. I, and oh my god i went into this this is so off off topic but who gives a shit like yeah, this is just what we do. i called cat one day and i was like i hate you and she's like why i was like I'm, I'm not a lizard person, and you're making me like these weird things, you know what I mean? Like, this <laughs> lily is so cute, like, and uh, so I go in the pet store, and there's a damn chameleon, and I'm video recording Cat, and it's literally, like, slowly reaching out to me, like, take me home, and I was like, damn it, Cat, this is your fault. I'm just saying, she almost did. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> close. Oh, someone else said I was really mad when they brought the animals on, basically uh, as bait to Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah, I, I've seen some. Str- I don't get it either. I mean, Elfie's vegan, and I, I mean, I'm a huge animal ad, ad, you know, advocate. Adv- I, I've, I can't even talk because it just stresses me out. It does. Oh, it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Though, like, the little little dude couldn't say, hey, dude, can you take me out of this box? Because, like, you're stressing me the fuck out. You know what I mean? Like, they can't talk for themselves, and that's the part that stresses me out. So, yeah. I'm like... like, that just could have been done a little bit differently, yeah. in my opinion. Really bad. Um, now, the next episode was where I, I flew off the handle, pretty much. Um, so, this is where Alex chooses. So, I like Alex. Alex is is probably one of my faves. I like, T- I used to like Tanner a lot. Tanner got, he's very monotone now. You know, like, I don't think people realize when you're on camera uh, investigating or hosting, whatever it is, you can't sound just one, it just boring if you're one tone. Like, you've got to be excited and like what you're doing. And, and Tanner's all, is so monotone that it just like, at this point gets on my nerves. But then you have Alex, who's pretty good. Like, I like it, but I like Tanner. It runs towards things. At least one of them does. And Dakota just screams like a banshee every time there's a little fart noise. Like, he screams. You know what I mean? Um, Chelsea, eh, you know, whatever. Like, eh, mm, you know, she's gotten better. But, um, I was going to say, she's gotten better, for uh-huh, sure. She has gotten better. Screaming. Now, <laughs> with Alex's episode, where did they go again? They went to um, Odd Fellows' home. Okay, that's right. Which yeah. is in Missouri, right? Yes. And, um, yeah, that was wild. I, I was very <sighs> interested to hear uh, Crystal's take on that episode. Where do I begin? No. Um, <laughs> the beginning. <laughs> the start. Let's just like rewind this. Okay, yeah. is everybody ready for the next 45 minutes? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just making sure. No, <laughs> but like looking at this from a production standpoint with this episode, uh, and Kat knows this because like I've had to, tra- Elfie knows this for God's sake. Like Elfie's on here, you know, like um, basically they went into the Oddfellows home. There were two separate buildings. It, there's so much that happened, it was unbelievable. Um, but the first thing that happened was they saw a real-life person basically run out of one of the buildings while they were, like, going through scoping it out before they actually left. So, um, as a producer, like, this is me talking as a producer, not as a paranormal investigator. This tells me that they still don't have proper security three seasons in. I don't know why. Three seasons in, there should be no money problems at this point. In my opinion, period. 
Everybody should be making sufficient money to the point where there's plenty of money to spend, there's no budget, there's no cap. And where the f is the security at and why aren't they sweeping the buildings before they go in? Um, you know, like, I, I don't want to sound scary, but you do have a female with you, Chelsea. And if there are homeless people or creepy people or stalkers, whatever, uh, and she could get the, the rapey vibe, you know, going on. Like, you don't want that. You want your sister safe. I, I don't want to hear an excuse that there's no finances for security. That's bullshit three seasons in. I don't want to hear that. Like, and if, if you're saying you don't have money, then who's pocketing it? One of the EPs, Zach, who's pocketing it to the point where they can't get security? Um, so there's a real life person that runs out there, scared shitless, essentially. And I pretty much flew off the handle because... You know, when you sign contracts for um, series like this, you um, are put on liability insurance. Um, the production company, the network, puts you on liability insurance. That's for, like, let's say um, Kat goes into this abandoned building and she's in the dark and she slips down some stairs and she rips her leg open to the point where she has to be airlifted out and she has to have surgery. And let's say we're four hours away from, like, a hospital, she has to be airlifted out. All the liability insurance pays for all of that. Let's say I die and uh, while I'm on set filming in an abandoned building and uh, my family sues production company or whatever for like an at-fault death. This is what the insurance is for. Like literally like if it's, let's say my family sues for $7 million, they will get that and more because that's what the insurance is for to cover. Um, my point is, is that if they have liability on them, which is can be pricey, especially for third season in, like they're doing a major production now, and somebody gets hurt, like rapey vibes or stabbed or shot because they didn't put security in to sweep the building, like you're looking at a massive liability if someone's seriously injured or dead. Like you're looking at a potential like suit against you with attorneys. I feel like if they haven't had somebody sweeping these locations, and they've been to some big locations, um, they've been very lucky to not have um, an instance like that where it can be a danger to everybody, including Chelsea, of course, mm -hmm. um, especially as a female. And um, I guess the thing that was really concerning with, with Oddfellow's home was the fact that there was really no way for you to know that somebody was in the building because most of it was like demolished. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it was like, you couldn't really hear a door slam mm -hmm. or anything like that from the outside. Like people were literally walking through the wall because there's a hole in the wall, you know, and then you go out, you can see outside. Um, so. Well, the creepier part that the guy, whoever ran out has immaculate freaking night vision. Because yeah. there was no, there. there was no, and it, it was a person, like it was a legit mm -hmm. person, but the, he had no cell phone for light, he had no flashlight for light, and he booked it out of there. They chased him out, but, um, which is scary, because that tells you not only is his night vision good, but also he knows the place like the back of his hand. That's scary. What if he came back? Like, it's just, the safety it's concern different. is like, I, I can't even, I can't even keep talking about it. You know what I mean? Um, as a producer, it made me cringe pretty badly. And I mean, you know, at the end of the day, the EPs may not care for security and be like, oh, well, if something happens, it'll be good for views. Man, that's like doing a dance with the devil if you're willing to let somebody get hurt, injured, or killed just to get some damn views on a show. You know what I mean? Dangerous. It's just dangerous in general. I'm kind of shocked that nobody would have mentioned to have them, you know, have security with them especially with some of these huge locations they've been to i but, i don't know i don't know what's yeah. going on somebody's pocketing the money somewhere and it's an ep and i don't know which ep but somebody's not doing things right and um i think that that also kind of teaches the audience bad things that like you don't need to sweep before you investigate because you know i don't want to hear the excuse oh, well, I'm not here to, like, be a role model for everybody else. You're on TV, boo-boo. You're going to be a role model whether you like it or not. People are going to follow you and trust faith in everything that you do. And they're going to turn around and do the same thing again. And they're going to be in unsafe instances, and people are going to mock you and mimic you. Now, moving forward, as if that wasn't bad enough, it got worse. 
and it yeah. got worse because it's Alex's location, and so they end up walking outside. Once again, middle of winter, um, they just found, and Missouri gets cold. My, my family's from Missouri, from Kansas City. Um, in the winter, it's like ice storms, ice, very humid, you know, like ice sticks to the ground for a long time. It's very cold, and um, basically Alex takes everybody outside, and he goes, so my twist for this location is I am taking everybody's flashlights away from them for the night. And we're not staying the normal, like, four hours. We're staying, like, six or eight hours at the location. And you are not allowed to have any flashlights. And thank God Chelsea did speak up. I was really proud of her because she goes, are you serious? You're going to take our light, our only light source, after we just caught people running out of the building and it's not safe? And Alex was like, yeah, I know, I seem like an asshole, but this is the only time I'm going to be able to have control over the situation. And he proceeded to take their flashlights, and they went into the building, isolated each one of them in completely separate areas with absolutely no light source. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't, that wasn't smart. It wasn't smart. I mean, I, you know, like, I play the feminist card a lot. You know, like I do, and like I like to be um, the strong female, especially when there hasn't been a lot in this industry, and like we're trying to break barriers and make changes as being strong women because, you know, the image of men in the paranormal industry is greasy hair and biceps and threatening for a demon to come up out of that ground and get you. Okay, so we're trying to break barriers here. But at the end of the day, I also am not stupid. And when I say that is I know that when Elfie, Kat, and I go to film, we are women, period. And we have to be safe no matter what. And for Alex not to consider Chelsea in that moment by taking away her flashlight, making her sleep completely isolated and alone in a building where people had broken in and just ran out, really pisses me off and rubs me the wrong way to be honest that there wasn't respect on her side at least like fine tanner and and you know dakota go without a flashlight whatever but chelsea's a girl like she you know women can get overpowered very easily very easily and i was pissed to say the least i was pissed to say the least how did you feel yeah. about it I felt the same. I didn't think that was the right decision to do. And, you know, he did He did mention that that would be his last time he'd have a location. So I don't know if that was like, you know, a discussion beforehand, but I feel like he kind of ruined his, his time to pick a location by making that decision. You know, that was just not safe, not safe. So they stuck it out, you know, unfortunately they never have the best evidence coming out of there. They always have one or two things. I don't like the way that it's being edited. Um, as far as I know, Dakota's the editor on it. He basically uh, edits it, produces it, and is like a host of it. And I think he's doing too much and I think it's starting to show through his work. It is impossible for one person to do everything. It is impossible. Now, I think that he also might be trying to follow in the shoes of what Ghost Adventures did in the beginning, which was Zach and Nick were EPs, Aaron was camera tech, Nick was camera tech, Zach was host, and then editing-wise, it was pretty much Billy, Nick, and Zach. So I think that in Dakota's head, he's like, I can do the same thing Ghost Adventures did. The difference is, though, is Ghost Adventures came out like 10 years ago. And the reason that Zach and Nick were in control of the editing was because nobody knew how to edit paranormal footage like night vision footage. You can train people to do that now. You don't have to be in control of everything. And I think that Dakota's bitten off way too much because it shows in his... I, I literally was watching the episode and I was looking at the time frame of... You know, a typical episode is like, okay, it's like the buildup and then like, you know, the letdown or whatever. And it's like literally four or six minutes of night vision footage. And like this goes back to them saying in the beginning when they first started the series saying, um, I am not a paranormal show, we're an urban exploration show. But you're using night vision and you're using ghost gear. So which is it? Like 
either shit or get off the pot. Like, there's no in-between. There's no kinda. You're asking things to make a noise. You're asking things to let you know you're there. You're using the ovulus. You're using all this equipment. But yet, you're editing it like it's an urban exploration show. And then he's going on and on about... He did this huge blathering thing about, oh, what fear does to the mind and, like, all these controlling situations and we're going to blindfold you in the dark. and But yet we're still ghost hunting. So it's like you can't do both. Pick a side. Pick one. Either make it urban exploration or paranormal. It's so, like, flimsy back and forth. I don't really know what's going on. Um, yeah, the, me the message isn't clear. And I feel like that would only cause more frustration during the editing process, especially if Dakota and I think somebody else named Alex or whatever is helping with the editing as well. But I mean, I can only imagine that that must ca cause like a creative block because it does seem like in some of the episodes that there is some confusion as to what the message is mm -hmm. because they, they, I don't think they used paranormal equipment for that episode, did they? Not for that one, but I mean, pretty much yeah. everything else they did. They had the ovulus. Weird. Yeah, it was weird. Someone said, do you think Dakota feels pressure to edit this because Zach's the producer on it? No, I think that the executive producers are cheap asses. And I think that um, Dakota isn't being tough enough when he starts negotiations with the executive producers. He needs to lay down exactly what he needs and what he wants. He needs to go to the EPs before season starts and say, hey, I can't keep editing like this. I literally have no life. Like, he talks about it on social media. That, like, all yeah. he does is work and edit and film, and that's it. And, like, I don't know if it's on his part. Maybe he learned from Zach. Zach's very controlling when it comes to, like, film. And, like, it's okay. Like, he's good at what he does. So maybe Dakota took that, and he's trying to, like, recreate it in a way. But at the end of the day, if it were me season three, I'd be like, hey, I'm done editing. I need a freaking editor. I need a full post-production team. I'm tired. We have the money to do this now. So it's either Dakota's not speaking up enough because you have to literally tell them exactly what you want in detailed form before you sign that contract. Because if he doesn't go to the EPs and say, this is what I want and this is what I need, of course they're going to run him over and be like, oh, he didn't ask for an editor. That's an extra $30,000 that we can split between us and the EPs. Of course they're not going to offer it to him. I don't think that they're being cheap, the EPs, to like not give him money for editing. I don't think Dakota's speaking up enough about what he needs and what he wants. Yeah, well, they're not going to baby him. No, either. no. You know? Mm -hmm. It's very detail oriented with mm -hmm. the whole process. So, and you have yeah. to be very specific with what you want, and that's why it's hard for me. Even in the past, when I've gone in with negotiations, I'm a single female going into a room full of five to ten male EPs, and they're looking at me like, "What the hell do you want?" And so that's when I told you guys in the past, I have to walk, talk, think, and act like a man, and know exactly what I want, and lay it out on the table. And if you don't, they're going to run you over because the less you ask for, the more money the EP and the network makes, period. So, of course, they're not going to help you unless you either A, ask for it, or B, tell them what you need. But the, the editing is like, I don't know why he's only leaving like four to six minutes at the end for like the night vision footage. It's just like, it's to me, it's a very like a big letdown. You're like watching it. Like Elfie said this too. You're like watching it. Like, oh, there's a couple things happening. It's so good. And all of a sudden it ends and you're like, what the hell? Yeah, the direction is not um, where it needs to be. And I think that comes with the message. You know, once you simplify the message and you make that clear, then the rest will kind of work itself out. But you can tell. You can tell there's some misfiring going on. Mm hmm. Now, as far as this whole thing went with um, Chelsea being in this location without a flashlight, without a light, in an abandoned building where they just saw squatters run out, I'm really upset about that because I'm concerned that there's going to be paranormal groups across the country, across the freaking world that see that, who are going to think it's fun to take a female investigator put her in an abandoned building and isolate her and leave her alone without any form of communication or light source. And it is not safe, period. And for, for them to like put that on TV and like make it look like it's okay for that to happen really stresses me out, to be honest. Um, so after that particular episode, I told Kat that I can no longer support Destination Fear and I'll no longer be watching any of the episodes. 
The cat just froze. Are you there? I'm telling you, I don't know if it's Shadow Mercury Retrograde going on. I don't know what it is, but let me try to call her back again. Can you hear me? Can you, I can hear you now. Yeah, that was that weird? weird. It cut out. Yeah, it like froze and shut you off. So anyway, I left off saying, oh, did it cut her off again? Shit, Mercury, you mother effa. Cat. Oh my god. Mercury retrograde. Ugh. Are you there? It keeps cutting you out. What is happening? Let me just shut Discord down and we'll just try this a different way. What? Are you Hello? there? Can you hear Wait. me? Isn't that stupid? You're, it's weird, like your camera box keeps like going out and it, then it's just me. <sighs> anyway, the last thing I said was after um, this episode with Chelsea being sort of isolated alone, I don't think that I can support Destination Fear and watch any more episodes. That's understandable. I think the part that really got to me... I don't know what's happening. Yeah, my dogs are like, now they're going, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I think the part that got me was at the end of that episode of the Odd Fellows Home episode, Dakota, I can't remember verbatim what he said, so no one crucify me for this. Um, but he said something along the lines of, from now on, they're going to have somebody sweep the location. And to me, it just kind of hit me because I'm like, you're, it's three seasons in, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I mean, think about the safety of your crew. Like, he does have a lot on his shoulders, and we're not saying he doesn't. Um, but he's also taken on that responsibility, and, and safety of the crew is number one. And that's why on the production side of any sort of film, it's a lot of responsibility. And, like, that's where I think a lot of people don't understand. I say this to Kat all the time. People think like, oh, Crystal hasn't gotten signed yet. Why not? Da, 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 da. Oh, she's lying. She's making it up. She hasn't done it. Da, 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 da. You have no idea. Uh, that's proof right there that you don't know what you're talking about. Because of the layers that go into it is like so much. And like, I know what I'm asking for in contracts and you have to be specific or this is what happens. And you're right. Why are you now deciding you're halfway, over halfway through season three, and now you're like, oh, maybe we should have security on? Are you serious? It took you till like, you know, your sister had to sit with the flashlight, no lighting source for 68 hours. She could have gotten murdered. Like, who knows what, what could have happened? And now you're figuring out that it's not safe. It's like, duh. Which I do have to give her props for that because she handled that like a champ. She handled afterwards. that like a boss, so you get it, Chelsea. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say. Mm -hmm. But another thing, too, is all of them were without light source. So, and that yeah. place, you're right, was a total dump. There was pieces falling from the ceiling. There was a stairway was missing. If one of them fell down a shaft and died, once again, liability. So I don't, that was so dumb on Alex's part. And why Dakota didn't step up, he's a producer on it. Well, if you're gonna be a producer, you better act like one, son. You should have stepped up and said, this is not safe, we can't do that. Because then there was like an emergency, like over the walkie, they're trying to run towards somebody else, none of them have light. And they're like running through this place that's like demolished and falling down. And I'm like, how stupid. How stupid. So then you have to ask the question of Dakota, if you're the one in charge of this set, why aren't you acting like it? Why are, I don't like the voiceovers. They're talking like doing the history. Tanner reads a part of it and then Dakota reads a part of it and then uh, Chelsea reads a part of it. Why? Make it one person. Who's the host? To me, it's like Dakota doesn't want any to step on anybody's toes. I, I bet you this is how he is. I want everybody to be equal. I don't want anyone to think anyone's higher than anybody else. That's not the way it, it works. Somebody has to be in charge on set. Because somebody has to hold the responsibility of keeping the crew safe. You, you, you're not even, unfortunately. The only one I saw on there as producer is Dakota. And he needs to start acting like he's in charge and he needs to start taking care of business because I'm really concerned, which is why I don't want to watch anymore. Something bad's going to happen. Someone's going to get hurt and I don't want to see it. And I don't, I think it's gross that they would try to make, get views off of someone getting injured and I don't want to see it. Scary. That's scary. And, and just kind of a liability in general. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, I think they have one more episode. 
um, they're going to two locations and want their, their final episode. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm curious to see what happens next. Mm-hmm. You're going to watch. I'm not unless you're absolutely... I'm, you'll have to take my right leg in order for that to happen, okay? <laughs> I'm so against it at this point. It's just, it's it's not good. It's not teaching investigators the right way to do things, and it's not safe, and I, I don't know. I really, I, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm going to get off my soapbox now because it's just, it is not safe. Okay, we have a couple of questions here. Someone says, I think they're going to Velisca Axel Axe House. Did you see that one? Yeah, they're going, uh, that's their... One of the two locations they're going to is. Okay. for the final episode. Mm-hmm. Um, someone said, I'm, I want to watch Velisca and then see what happens, and then I'm not going to watch it anymore. Um, someone says, the ghosts don't want me to stop watching Destination Fear because my feed froze. Um, <laughs> did they get any paranormal footage? They have. They've gotten some here and there, but not tons. They, I think they get about two to three pieces of evidence per location. Um, also asked if we talk about UFOs. Yes, we do sometimes, just not this stream. And another question was, curious on any update on Ghost Girl Diaries that you can give, or am I still hush-hush for now? Uh, I am still hush-hush for now. I'm not (laughs) hush-hush. Other people have made me hush-hush. So, yeah. I am hushed. We are hushed to the max. To the max. I have nothing to say. I don't know what you're talking about. No, I'm just kidding. Nothing going on. No, nothing. Everything's great. You know what I mean? No, it really is. Everything's great. It is. Everything's great. Yeah, no, there's, I have nothing to complain about. Everything is amazing in yeah. the world of Ghost Girl Diaries. Don't worry. It's true. I promise it's, co- it's coming. It's moving. I promise. Yes. It's along. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, we, Kat and I took off, what, a couple months? And it was great. Took off, let's see. It was great. June was horrible. <laughs> Where does it mean? <laughs> June that? was <laughs> awful. June was, I was staying on the pavement. Imagine, Kat was imagine picking me up. 20 in one month. <laughs> that was the epitome of June, okay? <laughs> then July, we were halfway through July was crazy. And yeah. then we took off like two weeks in July, pretty much all of August till now. And it was great, man. So yeah, we're back it to was- posting if you haven't noticed. And like, yeah, I'm not complaining. And now we're getting ready to go back into another busy section and, and we're it's going to be really bad this time, but that's okay. It's fine. No, no. This is what this is what I manifested. Great, it's fine. You know. This is this is why we rested. It you is. Know, it's important to take breaks. Yeah. Important to take breaks and listen to your body and its needs and do the thing. Yep. So, Can't kill yourself, yeah. you know, over content. But yeah, everything's good. Yes. Um, <laughs> next paranormal topic. Um. Katrina. Talking about Katrina Weidman. Katrina from Paranormal State. So we were really excited for her um, uh, last week. I think, wasn't it Elfie and I that talked about this for briefly? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. She posted... Portals to Hell. She posted Hell? Uh, Portals to Hell is the one with Jack Osborne. I don't remember what the other one oh. was called. Oh, oh, I get them confused. Um, she was talking about <laughs> posting on the 8th, I believe, is what it, which was two days ago. Katrina was going to have a new series up with her other friend from Paranormal State. I can't remember that girl's name. Who was her name? Do you remember? Heather? Heather, Heather? Taddy? Is that right? Taddy. I think that's right. Yeah. It's uh, called Travel the Dead. Travel the Dead. Um, mm-hmm. We were so excited because they were going to premiere it on YouTube. And then I was waiting for the drop because, I mean, I, I think Katrina's gotten so screwed. I've said that and I will continue to say it. I think she's gotten so screwed. They've thrown her around so much, and it's not fair, and I love the girl, and, like, she is good at what she does, and in my opinion, with Portals to Hell, she carries that damn show with Jack, Um, and so I was really happy, I said last week, I assumed that because she was doing something with YouTube, that it was because she might have pitched it, and they turned her down, or whatever, a travel channel. Now... Um, how do I word this properly? Generally speaking, when you're in a contract with a production company and or a network, you have control over your social media. Generally speaking, there will be some exceptions, but like take it for example, Aaron Goodwin's been with Ghost Adventures obviously since the beginning and he has a YouTube channel. I don't think he really posts much on there anymore, but he has a YouTube channel. Um, you know, like Billy does his like DJ music on the side and they don't care. 
Um, Nick released like albums. Remember, like his really rap career. Oh my that God. I... Oh good lord, we're just not gonna go there. <laughs> my ears are bleeding. <laughs> Woo. Um. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, no, but really, so like generally speaking, you can control your own social media. YouTube is considered social media. So what I think happened was she probably tried to pitch this to her producers or the network or whatever, and she says, hey, I have this great idea for this show with Heather. The network shuts her down because welcome to being a girl and paranormal, ho. It's horrible. It, it was weird because it was canceled or postponed. Excuse me. It was postponed. The Travel the Dead uh, series on YouTube. Um, on the release date, like hours so before, like it was hours almost like before. the rug. It was almost like the rug was pulled out right before it happened. <sighs> you know, and that is that's a little frustrating. Producers little frustrating. are assholes. Producers are assholes. Yeah. Whose fault is this? Not hers. I can guarantee you, Travel stepped in or the production company over Jack Osborne, and said this is a conflict of your contract. In my opinion, <clears throat> off the record, Katrina. You need to speak with an attorney and or a, uh, oh, what, can you hear me? I can hear you now, yeah. I think that she needs to speak with an attorney of some sort because I think that this is how, this is what I've been going through. And I, I it's going to, this is going to sound selfish and I'm going to say it anyway. Seeing her get stopped from putting something out on YouTube it really did validate that it's not just me who struggles in this industry so bad. It's all women in the paranormal industry because the same thing happened to her. And it's so shitty. It is so shitty. And change has got to happen because I am so sick of this shit. Not just for me, not just for Kat, not just for Elfie, but for Katrina and for every Chelsea going through that on Destination Fear. Someone's got to be a voice, and it sucks, and I can't believe they canceled it hours before it was supposed to premiere. That's sad. sad. Because who knows what she spent on cinematography? Like, we don't know what she was prepping. She says it's postponed from YouTube, but... That means if and or they let her release it, um, it's so messed up. I am so sick of these producers, men, because they're mostly men, thinking they have control over us. I am so over it. It's not even funny. Yeah, I think she said in her, her message that it was circumstances out of, out of their control. Okay, here's a question. Uh, Do you think... If Jack Osborne did this online on his YouTube channel, would it have been canceled two hours before it was supposed to premiere? Oh, no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Right. Yeah. And that's that's the messed up thing about it. Yep. It really is. Because there was so much hype with it. Like, everyone was really excited. We all were excited. Her promo images looked badass. Everything was like ready to go, and it was just—it was really disheartening to see it postponed um, on the day of the release. Yeah, it was really like you—you you know instantly if you're immersed in, in you know the the world of paranormal as a woman and in film, you know the reason why. You know the reason. I am just—I feel so—I feel for her. I feel for her. Yeah. Yeah. She's so great. She's so great. So anyway. I think she's the hell i think they have a new don't they have a new season coming out yeah but it's i can't can you, uh, i can't watch that show can you watch portals to hell no jack just makes me want to throw it's my head into a screwdriver it's sometimes jack. oh my god <laughs> he says the dumbest thing like i told you that one episode he's like holding the mel meter next to a light switch he's like oh my god it's going off it's a ghost and i'm like no it's not it's electricity like, it just tells you he doesn't know what he's doing, and it's, it's, she does hold the show, but I can't watch it, because it's not her. It's not her. Right, right. Um, anyway. Jesus, take the wheel. It's... <laughs> or, or Satan, one of the two, <laughs> like, literally. Both at the same time. It's a mix of both. <laughs> uh, it's just, so yeah, Katrina, I love you, girl. I'm so sorry you're going through this. I feel you. You're not alone. You are not alone. Yeah. Okay, next topic. What was there was one other thing we were talking about. It was um, Zach's new mini series. Yes. Oh, you you uh, dropped some tea on that. You dropped the tea on that. 
Okay. Um, so it was announced today. I think he dropped the trailer and the article on his Twitter today that he has a new mini series airing on October 2nd called The Haunted Museum. Apparently, um, it, it's going to be a mini series that are like mini horror films, and parts of it are scripted. Or, or the whole thing is scripted, I believe. Um, the series does have a two hour special and eight additional hour long episodes. Right. Um, it's featuring um, Eli Roth, and it, he specifically mentioned, I looked back on it after we chatted, Crystal, that it's, it was specifically stated that it was produced in collaboration with mm -hmm. Zach and Eli. Mm -hmm. um, so so I'm who was the director on it, though? Like, produced means um, planning, pre-production, possibly post-production. Uh, obviously, this is somewhat scripted, which means they would have had to have some sort of, like, storyboard going on. Um, yeah, yeah. Probably co-executively producing it, because they both have a lot of money. But yeah. I am curious to see who's the actual director on it. Yeah, did you, do you want me to look it up, or are you looking it up? I looked it up, and I didn't, I couldn't find anything on it, so I don't think any information's out on it yet. Yeah, I think um, it's a collaboration effort. Like, I think it was a collaboration. Okay. Great. Let me just say that when... Uh, it would be extremely rare, like extremely rare, for two people to be directing one thing. Like, they're, that that's crazy to me. Um, there's, like, it's something you learn in film school, which is, like... Uh, Stanley Kubrick did a collaboration with another director and it was just an effing mess because creatively you're both thinking something completely different. So, I mean, there's got to be only one director on it. So I'm just interested to see how this unfolds. Um, will I watch it? Yeah, I'm going to. Are you going to watch it? Oh, heck yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm all for that. Um, plus, Eli, Eli Roth is awesome. Um, but he... I'm interested... I had a question pop up in my head the, um, after I read the, the article, and I'm wondering if he pulled Eli in, Zach pulled Eli in because it is scripted. Right. And Zach comes from reality. Yes. Unscripted. I would agree so with may that. Maybe, maybe that was why, but I'm, it still is strange that there's not at least one person. Like, well, here's my, okay, so basically, if you don't know what we're talking about, um, Look it up. Look up. Uh, I think it's on his Twitter page. I'm not following it him, is. but it's on his Twitter. Um, it popped up under me under like Supernatural or something. So basically, uh, the real stories of the museum, the Dybbuk box, um, the devil's rocking chair, uh, Lee Shapiro, which is the female investigator that was found dead after she supposedly contacted demonic activity in her living room. I saw that was in there, which is interesting because supposedly her family is completely against any publicity against Lee Shapiro. Like, I mean, totally against it. Like, they didn't even know, her family didn't even know Zach had a, like, monument thing about her in his museum, and they were pissed. Were you talking about that? Yeah, yeah. but I saw that in the trailer, which is, it's like this person sitting in this living room chair, like, rocking chair, and then all of these, like, it looks like uh, they, I think she called them portals or something, and she had like twelve or eighteen different like speakers that were playing different frequencies. I'm assuming, and supposedly each frequency went somewhere else. And she says that she like contacted demons. She was found dead, like literally a day later. But her family was extremely religious, and ex Lee Shapiro is her name, um, and was extremely embarrassed by her antics and paranormal. And they wanted no. They tried to bury her death bury her like public persona they didn't want anybody to know about it so wow you know like whatever wow um i know that it's really hard to find any information about her online but that looked like one of the one of the pieces in the trailer now as far as him collaborating with eli roth you're right so if they're talking about his haunted museum um item specifications of like haunts that would probably be on zach's side and then mm -hmm. they filmed it in a very uh, non uh, non documentary sort of way, like it looks full on script to me. Whatever, I don't like, know. I can't. I don't. I, I, you didn't. There wasn't the enough to see it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think the article stated that it's scripted. Um, I can't remember exactly. Because they don't show but... any characters in the trailer talking. They just show Zach and like his museum, 
and then they show like paranormal activity happening. So you don't know if you're just watching it unplay. Like you don't know it's what you're saying. I think. Yeah. I think it's I think it's reenactments with actors and that's where the scripted part comes in. Mm -hmm. But they called it mini horror films. So like each eight uh, hour long episodes plus the two hour special whatever it is are like mini horror films so I'm assuming that's where Eli comes in and Zach is voicing it right like voicing the whatever the history right on it. voiceover or something yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. which is interesting yeah. though because that says Zach didn't want to do the scripted part which is really interesting mm -hmm. so he's basically saying I'm kind of comfortable doing the documentary reality side and not the scripted side so that's interesting you think that he would have wanted to like jump off and do his own thing maybe discovery plus put some you know requirements on him and and maybe they had to have eli roth involved i don't know but it'll be interesting to sort of chat about that later when we watch it uh, yeah i'm excited i'm excited to watch it I no me too good. yeah i like anything mm -hmm. paranormal so i'll watch it um until you like get left alone in an abandoned uh odd fellows <laughs> home without a light and you're a girl anyway I'll, i'm off my soapbox again it's fine um, sorry. It's just gonna happen sometimes. Uh, yeah, I think that was normal news. I think that was all of it. That's all I had in my notes, at least. Yeah. So, poor Katrina. I feel for you. And that sucks. And when is this shit gonna change in this industry, man? Hey, you never know. Maybe it'll change soon. I guess. Um, okay, I don't see anybody any more questions. Alright, so... are gonna fly away. Do what? My eyebrows are gonna fly away. I'm like, oh, it's gonna come. Through. The tea, who knows? So American Horror Story. So I mean, we've chatted about a couple of these characters, but in my opinion, I think American Horror Story is one of the best scripted, paranormal-based series that's ever been on TV. Cat's gone again. You know, I think I'll, oh, there she is again. Nope, she's agreed. Sorry, you're cutting it out again. I you know. were cutting out. Ah, that's creepy. <laughs> it's weird. What is happening? Demons, I think. Probably. Yeah. Just another day in life. It's fine. <sighs> Stop Demon it. Demon George King. I out. should have saged before what? I came on what? here. Just it keeps like, like you're oh like. Oh my god. What? Yeah. What? From this, from from earlier, you mean, or just in general? I don't know. I don't know what it is. There's something like weird happening it might be just mercury retrograde shadow period too with technology issues oh yeah see she cut out again this is bullshit <sighs> i know i'm sorry is it me i don't know no i no. no damn you computer trust me i have a new computer so it's not that it's not the connection um, Julia said the industry is degrading. Do you think that it would be ethical to go to locations like Pompeii or Machu Picchu? Cat's frozen again. God damn it. Oh, there you are. I, I don't know. I'm sorry, Cat. I don't know what's going on. Okay. I, I just hope it's not on my end. No, I don't think so. It's Satan in my computer. Okay. Um, do, you, um, do, you, do you think we should restart before talking about American Horror Story or just... Let's just do it. I can, let me try to just like, I'll call you back. You just like, okay. disconnect, and then let's just try it again. Let's see if that works. Okay. <laughs> oh. Hello. <laughs> um, so someone, uh, Julie said, the industry is degrading. Do you think it'd be ethical for someone to go to locations like Pompeii or Machu Picchu? Oh, I don't know. I That's, don't know if you can like access Pompeii. You'd, ha you'd have to really... Yeah, I don't know. That would be hard to access. Just, you'd have to know somebody, I think, that was... You'd have to know somebody. Um, yeah, I mean, eventually, I, I would love to go to, like, huge locations, like, overseas. But with COVID right now, I just... I don't think it's going to be happening. Well, um, I think it would, I think Macho Peach 2 would be hard, too, because that's in... I believe that's in Peru. Mm -hmm. And it's basically all outdoor. It's hard. It's hard at, at outdoor locations. I think you <sighs> talked about that recently. You talked about that with Elfie yep. last stream. Yeah. Well, it's you hard. know, it's you've hard. been, you've done outdoor locations with me. What's it like? I mean, it's a pain. It is. It's hard. It, it's hard because you have to be really careful with evidence to make sure that it's credible. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Make sure that like it's not something outside. It's. Why'd she, she 
froze again. My God. Maybe we're. Maybe I'm gonna have to put, call the streamer. You just froze again. Karen, I'm sure it's just like crazy. You cut out it's again old, the whole time. You know. Jesus, take hello. Away. Yeah. Oh my God, I was talking about Machu Picchu. It's okay. <laughs> it's fine. You're like going on about Machu Picchu. Like I can't hear you. I don't know what's going on. Uh, do we need to call it a night with the damn stream or what? Now you're. I can see you talking and your okay. audio. Oh. Are you okay? Oh, now you're cutting out. Hello. <sighs> Oh, oh, you're back now. Can we all just pray together that just, you know. <laughs> just do a St. Michael prayer, okay. Can St. Michael go in my computer and release the demons, please? Like, Jesus, God. It's weird because we're talking now and it's fine, but it's like we talk about. Well, I'm streaming the same way I do every single week. Like, nothing's changed. Like, Jesus. Well, and I'm live right now on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. So I have, I have you guys on all different platforms right now. But anyway, we're just going to keep trying. And if it gets too annoying, we'll just stop at some point. Jeez. Um... Anyway, outdoor okay. location. Yeah, and like same week, we went to this Native American location to investigate for a pilot episode. And yeah. that sucked because, well, I'm Native American, so I think I really got in tune to like the spirits that were in the cemetery area. And uh, I like triggered the spirits and all of a sudden just the wind started picking up. And that's really bad for audio. Really bad for audio. Cat's frozen again. There she is. I don't know. Are you back? Maybe. Okay. Yeah. You are. Can you hear me? Yeah. I just really over it at this point. Like, you know what? We're going to call it a stream, guys, because I don't know what's going on. I don't know why cat keeps freezing, but we're not going to, we're not going to keep going because it's just, it's just freezing. So. It just happens. Okay. So do we just want to hop in American Horror Story? No, because I have you on single cam right now, because that's the only time it doesn't freeze when you're not on camera. So <laughs> it'll be me talking with the voice of Cat. Like, you can be like the god, like the voice of God over me. Oh, okay. Well, let me know if the video pops on so I'm not doing something weird, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I think we're going to call it a stream, guys. I'm sorry. Um, oh, no. It's just freezing. I don't know why. I'm not doing... Nothing's changed other than Mercury Shadow Period, so... Um, Weird. I know it's not the end of the world, you know, we'll just deal and uh, next week Elfie will be back on. I know it's weird. I don't know why and um, It's fine. You know, it was, that was a good stream for an hour. Honestly it is I think we chatted about some good stuff some upcoming things good paranormal news mm -hmm. all the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. and we uh, can do here story in a couple weeks yeah we'll do it again like i just like yeah. the characters of american horror story and they're based on like locations and people and like, i just think it's really good and it's yeah. one of the most respected i think as far as a scripted series about paranormal i love american horror story for that reason and so yeah we'll go over it again but anyway awesome. outdoor locations are a pain in the ass um there's nothing you can do about it just elements True. suck filming and elements suck so that's why I'm not big on outdoor locations or pain. So anyway, do I yeah. have any other questions going on that I missed? I'm sorry, guys. Normally we do like a two hour stream, but I'm not going to sit here and let Kat's face keep freezing on, on stream. Do you want me to check my video? Do you want me to check my no, video? No, it's not you. It's not you. We can. Why don't we just postpone and do AHS next week unless Elfie's not okay with that? Okay, Elfie. Elfie, are you okay with that? I know you're on. Are so. you she on? Is she on? Yeah, she's on. Yeah, she was talking shit about women and paranormal and how. She, Elfie, know. we yeah. love you. Elfie's a badass, you know. We love you. Don't oh mess with Elfie. She'll burn you in witch hell. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> she's like, what? I'll do what? No, I won't. No, I'm just kidding. Look, never <laughs> underestimate the power of a witch. Okay? Yeah, that's I'm true. That. It's a mood. It just depends. Ooh, follow us on social media. I posted some new videos today. I posted um, about some animal rescues that are going on in Vegas. So if you're in a local, I did not. Somebody asked if I um, adopted any cats or dogs today because uh, you know I'm, I love animals. No, I did not. Although there is a, a cat um, named, oh my God, what's his name? Not Midnight. Um, I think it was Midnight, no? No. Oh my God, what was his name? Anyway, there's a cat that I filmed today and he was born without hind legs. And he scuttles around all over the place, and he's so freaking cute. And nobody, nobody will adopt him.
because he doesn't have back legs. And I was like, that's not fair. Somebody's got to adopt him. He's so freaking cute. So, um, he's a sweetie. Now, he, I did want to adopt. I was about ready to just carry him out. You know what I mean? But this close to becoming a hoarder. So I just have to be careful. You know what I mean? Cat's a bearded dragon hoarder. You with the beardy. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I see them and I'm like, I'm going to take you home. It's fine. <laughs> oh, God. Jesus. Well, I know. thank great. you guys. Watch our social media. Sorry we had to cut it short tonight. We're going to be all right. We're going to make it. And uh, follow us. Yeah. And we'll catch True. you guys next. This will be uploaded as a podcast. Says, uh, yeah. Wait, you cut out. What did you say? I said, I said, the ghost of Cat says, we'll see you next week. The voice, the god voice of Cat, who's... Voice of Cat. The, the ghost of Cat says. It's literally, I can't wait to watch this later, because it's just going to be my face, and, like, your voice just, like, pops in. I can see her on my other screen. You guys can't. And so it's just, like, God, the voice of Cat God is above us, and she's just with us. So, anyway. It's so weird you can see me. I don't, when you're not on double screen, you're fine. So I don't, I don't know, man. That's whatever. a mood. <laughs> Our spirit guys are like, just take the night off. We're like, fine, fine, I will. No, so thank you guys so much. This will be uploaded as a podcast as always. And as always, we'll catch you guys next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye, bye voice of cat. Bye, God of cat. Bye. God voice. <laughs>